A total solar eclipse is a truly remarkable astronomical event. It is both rare and exceptionally cool. It's just very, it's cooler than you think, unless you've experienced it, in which case it's about as cool as you think. And this one is special, mostly in that it's covering a huge amount of land, very close to or on top of where a lot of people live. More than 200 million people are within driving distance of the path of totality. This event is news, and so unsurprisingly, people have questions about it. And I am going to attempt to have Eclipse answers. Question number one. Desert Nails asks, I don't live on the path on the map. I live in Arizona. Would there be anything for me to see? Yes! If you have eclipse glasses in Arizona, you will be able to see a partial solar eclipse. This is where the moon passes between the sun and earth a little bit, but not entirely. It doesn't totally block out the sun, but you might still notice some weather changes that might get cooler because there's less solar radiation hitting earth. And if you got eclipse glasses, you can look at it and be like, whoa, that's weird. The moon, which I can't usually see because it's a new moon during a solar eclipse, is there blocking out a piece of the sun. Adelena asks, why are they so infrequent? And is there an area on the Earth that's more of an eclipse hotspot or cold spot? Total solar eclipses are infrequent for like three reasons. Number one, the moon is tilty compared to the sun. So like if the sun Earth plane is here, the moon's orbit tilts a little bit. And so most of the time, it like the shadow of the moon misses the Earth because it's not in line. But sometimes Sometimes in that tilt it is in the right spot where it actually does cast a shadow on the Earth. Number two, the Earth's orbit around the Sun is elliptical. So sometimes in that orbit it's further away, sometimes it's closer. And this is the Earth-Moon system that is closer or further away, not just the Earth. When the Earth-Moon system is further away in that elliptical orbit, the Moon is actually too far away from the Sun to block out the whole Sun. And so you will not get a total eclipse, you'll get an annular eclipse where there's just like a ring of fire around the Moon. And the third reason is that most of the Earth doesn't have people on it. That's why this eclipse is such a big deal to me. So most of the times there is a total solar eclipse, it's just over the ocean and no one is there to see it. This one isn't just over land, it's over a lot of large cities. And also it's very close to a lot of other large cities and a lot of people are going to go to see it. The second part of your question, yes, there are hot spots uh, on Earth. First, as you get closer to the poles, the shadow actually gets stretched out over Earth. So like just by the angle of the Earth. So if it's like right here, it's just going to be the circle of the moon. If it's up here, it's going to be more spread out because it's like the, the shadow is hitting the moon at an angle. I think that you can visualize what I'm talking about, but it's just like the shadow of this is going to be smaller than the shadow of this. It's going to be spread out. And so there's just like more area, the more northern you go. So the actual path of the eclipse covers up less land and takes less time when it's closer to the equator. So solar eclipses can obviously only happen during the day. The sun has to be up. Second thing, there is more day in the summertime than in the wintertime. You also know that. The thing that you don't know is that just by virtue of the way that things are right now, the northern hemisphere's summer currently not this is just a coincidence, but it currently lines up with when the earth is closer to the sun during its elliptical orbit. So the southern hemisphere gets more annular eclipses and we in the northern hemisphere get more total eclipses. Which is weird but also kind of nice for people because there are more of us in the northern hemisphere. There's also more land in the northern hemisphere. And Bryson says, will it affect Texas's solar generation more than an overcast winter day would? Probably not. Like it would be a big difference to your eyes, but probably not a huge difference to a solar panel. Solar panels really like direct photons hitting at a perpendicular angle. Your eyes aren't like that. They don't need that. But I am curious, and I hope somebody follows this, but I'm super curious to see how wind generation might change during the eclipse in Texas. Because there's a lot of wind power in Texas and eclipses do affect how the wind moves around. Justin wants to know what can be used besides glasses bought from a store to look at it. Welding mask, car window tint, good idea for a video, just saying. Justin, this would be a short video. No, no, only use eclipse glasses or if you know what you're doing and you are a welder, you can use number 14 welding glasses. Do not use window tent or sunglasses. These things will not work. Only the highest opacity welding glasses will work. The sun, and I know this is wild, but it is brighter than a welding arc. So the fact that welders have to wear these big masks, you should think about that before you look at the sun ever, but especially during 
an eclipse. Speaking of, here's a question. I was always told that looking at an eclipse damages my eyes. Why is this? Is it worse than just staring at the sun on a regular day? I feel like we do a terrible job of talking about this because people aren't afraid. Of, the sun's out every day. Why is an eclipse extra dangerous? Why is everybody telling me to be like worried about this? Is this the overprotective nanny state once again? The reason is because during an eclipse, especially in the latter parts of the eclipse before totality, or if you're close to totality, but doesn't get all the way there, it's going to feel like you can look at the sun because it's going to be way less bright. Also, you're going to want to because it's weird. Like there's a strange thing happening in the sky. If there's just like a little crescent of sun left visible as the moon is covered up 90% or 95% of the sun, it's going to feel to your eyes like you can look at it without doing damage. And that is not the case. If you look at the sun while that is happening and you're fascinated and you stare at it for just a little too long, you will burn your retina, you will have to go to the doctor, you may never get your vision all the way back again. Like sometimes it comes back for people, sometimes it doesn't. It happens every eclipse. So I'm just saying, play it safe, get some eclipse glasses. Why do we care? Not that contrary in a question. I mean, are we learning anything new each time it happens at this point? Or is it pretty blasé by now, scientifically? In terms of science, this is a great question. In terms of like the human experience, I will not allow it. Like, it's really cool. If you can get to a total solar eclipse, I've been told it's really amazing. I've never been to one. I am going to one. I'm very excited to be at it. Hopefully it will not be cloudy. But scientifically, this is a fine question to ask. Like, is there actual progression of science because of eclipses? And in this case, actually there might be. Maybe fun to point out here, but like the very beginning of solar physics happened during an eclipse. Like the eclipse was happening. We used to think that the corona that we would see during a total solar eclipse was like the moon's atmosphere or something. Like it was the sun shining through something that was around the moon that we had never seen before. And we're like, what is this thing? But then we realized, no, that is in fact something around the sun that we can't normally see because the sun is too bright for us to see like the relatively dark corona around the sun. When the moon is blocking out the entire sun, then you can see the corona, which is this beautiful thing. And you can hold up a prism and you can see what light comes through. And this is how we discovered the first element not on Earth. When you heat elements up, they have like specific emission spectra. And there was an emission spectra that nobody had seen anymore. And they named it after the sun, Helios. They called it helium. And then later we discovered helium here on Earth. So cool. But the corona remains like a truly bizarre thing. It's extraordinarily hot. It is much hotter than the surface of the sun. And that's weird because it's farther away from the sun than the surface of the sun is. So we're still trying to figure out all of the mechanics of the corona and what makes it so hot. And it actually might be really helpful to have probes that are currently at the sun, like the Parker Solar Probe, which actually travels through the corona, and ground-based telescopes being able to visualize the corona during an eclipse when the moon isn't blinding the telescope. So yeah, scientists actually think this might be a really interesting year for solar physics because we have both these probes that are near the sun and a bunch of ground-based telescopes that can look at the corona during this solar eclipse that is passing over a lot of ground-based telescopes. Yonan asks, will there be a comet visible during the eclipse? Maybe there is a comet that is visible right now. Likely you won't be able to spot it, but somewhat importantly to note, you if you can see it during the eclipse, you'll probably also be able to see it just at nighttime. You can look up this comet. It's called Comet 12P slash Pons Brooks. Uh, that's the names of the, fa the, the people who spotted it, Ponds and Brooks. But it's not going to be a bright object in the sky. It will look like a little smudge. Uh, if you are in a place that has much moisture in the air or much light pollution, you will not be able to see it. It's a dim object. There's going to be a lot of other stuff going on during the solar eclipse. Maybe if you want to try and spot it and take like a long exposure photograph of it, that would probably be quite cool. Ben says, I'm curious about the perfect ratio of moon size distance, sun size distance. Do factors of solar system formation make this more likely? No, this is 100% a coincidence. The sun is about 400 times farther away than the moon, and it is also about 400 times bigger. They are so close to the same size in the sky that 
where we are in our slightly elliptical orbit matters as to whether you get a total or an annular eclipse. They are practically the same size. And this is such a coincidence. This is not something that happens at any other planet in the solar system. It's not something that would happen if you reran the simulation again. Like, it is a weird coincidence. And that is so cool. And it allowed us to discover helium before we found it on Earth. Music Man asks, if the moon is gradually moving further away from Earth, what did eclipses look like thousands or millions of years ago? And how long until a full total eclipse that you can see with the naked eye no longer exists? First of all, you can see all total eclipses with the naked eye. It's one of the easiest things to see. If you, if you have severe macular degeneration, you can still see that the world got dark. But the moon does move away from the Earth at like a little bit more than an inch a year, uh, like 3.5 centimeters a year or something. And eventually that will mean that over the course of time, there will be more and more annular eclipses until there is one final total solar eclipse that is a very brief eclipse and with a very narrow band that does not last for very long. And that will happen, NASA did the math, around 600 million years from now. So. We got time. We're good. I don't, we don't have to worry about that one. One last thing to worry about. This is great news. I love to not have to worry about something. Valathor asks, how does an eclipse work when the Earth is flat? You know, one of my favorite things about flat earthers is that they don't agree on anything else. So you ask four flat earthers, you get four different answers to this question. If you want to start a flat Earth fight, ask him if the other planets are spheres, because that's, I love that one. Hannah wants a eclipse dad joke. The traditional one is, how does the man in the moon cut his hair? Eclipse it. Uh, that's pretty good. Eclipse it. Whimsy Scott wants to know, do animals go wowza over the eclipse or is that a human only thing? They seem to act a little bit weird. I mean, mostly what they do is they start to act as if it is early dusk. They do early dusk behaviors. Crickets will start to cricket. Uh, birds will start to roost. It's like, I, like, I guess it's dusk is what it seems like a lot of animals are thinking. Other than that, there's a lot of discussion about what animals do, but that's one thing that we definitely know happens. Speaking of, why is the moon out at 3 p.m. anyway? 3 p.m. not moon time. <laughs> and then this emoji. The moon is out at all times of day throughout a lunar month. Like it's out in the day as much as it is out at night. We just can't see it as well during the day. But the weird thing about this is basically a full moon will rise as the sun is setting and it will set as the sun is rising. Whereas a new moon will rise as the sun is rising and set as the sun is rising. And new moons are invisible. And also solar eclipses only happen when the moon is new. Because the new moon happens when the sun is shining on the back of the moon. That's why you can't see the moon in the sky because the sunlight isn't hitting it in a way that allows the light to be seen from Earth. So only during the new moon. So if like I'm the sun and you're the Earth and I'm shining right on the back of the moon and the moon is new. But usually it's like down here or up here because of the, we were talking about that earlier. But if it's right here, then that's an eclipse. Rachel wants to know Team Edward or Jacob. I honestly, I didn't feel like either were great decisions. William wants to know why does the moon seem to hold still when totality begins? William, the moon always seems to hold still. Things celestially don't move very fast. If you put it on like fast motion, you could see it move. But to our perception, these objects in the sky mostly appear to be staying in the same place. Eric wants to know why are there way more eclipses in North America, but they're more rare in Europe? They're not. We just had like really good eclipse luck in the North North America the last few years. Europe's gonna get two in the next five years, I think. I think there's like, there's gonna be two that will cross Spain, just Spain. Nothing in Northern Europe, but this is just a coincidence. Based on latitude, every latitude pretty much gets the same number of eclipses. Let me look up those Spain ones so I can tell you when they are. There's gonna be one that goes across Spain August 12th, 2026, and one that goes across Spain and also much of the Middle East and North Africa on August 2nd, 2027. Either wants to know what if it's cloudy? It's gonna be a bummer if it's cloudy, I'll be honest with you. Like if it is full socked in cloudy, then it's gonna be, that's gonna be really annoying. Now what will happen is it will go from being daytime in the middle of the day to being nighttime in the middle of the day. And that will still be weird and totally worth experiencing in my opinion. But obviously better if you can see the corona and the sun, that's gonna be better. But if it's kind of cloudy, oftentimes the clouds will actually dissipate as the eclipse approaches because a lot of clouds are fed by the sun heating the earth and water rising from it. So as the eclipse approaches, the sun will be having less of its radiation hitting the earth. There will be fewer and fewer clouds. And then 
potentially, there will be enough no clouds that you'll actually be able to see the sun in the sky. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but that does often happen. Now, if it's like socked in rain clouds, that won't happen. But if it's like fluffy clouds here and there, it tends to be that it actually clears up a little bit before the eclipse, which is kind of amazing. That's just a coincidence, but it's a good coincidence for us. Lily asks, does complete darkness only occur in 100% totality? Yeah. If you have 1% of the sun still showing, it is amazing how bright the sun is because that will look like just sort of dusk. With 5% of the sun still showing, it won't even look that dark. It really is like the last like six to 10 seconds before the total eclipse when it actually, like the, the light significantly falls off. Marshman54, can I make homemade glasses? Absolutely not. You will hurt yourself. Don't do that. And our last question from Harrison. What if an eclipse wasn't momentary, but instead perpetually locked in? And what sort of path would the moon, the sun, and the earth need to be in to lock a specific area in eternal eclipse? How would that affect the area and the world at large? That's freaking weird, Harrison! I think that I know enough about how these systems work that I can say that this couldn't happen naturally. You need to have the object be the right size and in like specific, like a specific point that is gravitationally stable between the Earth and the Sun. These are called Lagrange points, but when we say that they're gravitationally stable, they are not that gravitationally stable. So I'm super gravitationally stable right now because I'm at the bottom of the Earth's gravity well. Not at the bottom, but at least as far as I can get down uh, without falling through some atoms. And the moon is moving around us in a stable orbit that is around that, it's like rolling around the hole that is our gravity well. These Lagrange points aren't like holes that you can roll around or fall into. They're more like the top of a hill. So if you're on the side of a hill, you're definitely going to roll down the hill, right? If you're on the very top of the hill, it's kind of flat and you can sit there. But if the wind blows or a squirrel comes along and nudges you, you're going to roll down the hill and you're going to lose that gravitational stability. So it's gravitationally stable, but it's not stable stable. Like a large object would need to have it be totally like constantly corrected to stay in that spot. Now it's not going to like fall and fly into an orbit as easily so it's much more stable than that but it's not like a well that it can sit in. It's a, a hill that it can sit on top of and anything might knock it off like any small gra gravitational perturbation might knock it off. So that system could not be stable long term. It could not happen naturally but a sufficiently advanced civilization maybe could harness enough energy to have a large object there and create a constant shadow on Earth just to be mean to your friend Steve or something? Humans are not there yet. Maybe we will never get there. But who knows? Maybe we will. One can only hope that someday we'd have enough excess energy to just move around giant space rocks to play pranks on our friends. And that's as much as I know about eclipses.